In today's podcast, well, we talk about a lot. We talk about the benefits of God demonstrating the love of Christ as we suffer and being hospitable to all. Hey there, welcome to the Five by the Fire podcast. I'm your host, Armand Sheffy, a.k.a. Pastor Fury, and I'm also the executive director of the Unshackled Network, a family of missionaries that exist to help the marginalized experience freedom in Jesus through equipping and empowering disciple makers called to the forgotten. Now, if you're watching this as, you know, uh, you're finishing up Thanksgiving, hopefully you still have this uh, reverberation in your spirit of gratitude, of Thanksgiving, truly, uh, for all that God has done in your life. And I have that same thought, that same um, manifestation of God's spirit within me as I come to the passages in the days reading the McShane Bible reading plan. One of those is one of my favorite psalms, um, Psalm 103. Let's see if we can find that quickly. And I want to read to you a few passages of that as we look at how that um, not only impacts our life, but actually connects with one of the other passages that I want to talk about today. Psalm 103, it says, uh, it start, it's, it's a song of praise and thanksgiving, uh, blessing the Lord. And it says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. So David's saying, hey, you know, I want to praise God, like in every ounce of me, right? From the inside out, I want a shout of praise coming out of me. He continues on. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. He's telling his soul, yo, you better bless God. Like even when you're having hard days, when you're struggling, right? When it feels like suffering is too much, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And then he says, and forget not all his benefits. Talk about good self-talk here. David is telling himself why to do this, why to be praising God. Don't forget, he says, don't forget all the good things that come along with being of God, right? All the benefits of him. He says, who, who forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases. So he forgives your sins. He's healing you as you're sick. He redeems your life from the pit, right? And and he and there's like physical pits, right, that they've been in, like in in jails and in prisons, and and you know, uh, um, uh, looking back at stories of like Joseph when he was in the pit, getting ready to you know be uh, uh, sold off into slavery, like, and his life has been redeemed. He takes us from our lowest, and he redeems it, right? He rescues us, and he gives us a hope and a future, right? Says he redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Mm. Now, people like Joseph and David, they, as a result of their you know, faithfulness to God, they were truly crowned. David was crowned the king. Joseph was, was essentially crowned, given that, that ring of, of authority to, to be number two over all of Egypt. But he says here, the crown that we all receive, all of us receive, is one of steadfast love and mercy. His, his love that doesn't end, right? And he actually echoes that same uh, thought later on. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. But he says, he satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm. There's a lot of people these days, myself included, who are going through this journey on sometimes feeling weary, feeling tired. Your source is in God, right? He's the one that satisfies you with good, right? When you're, you're, you're angsty and you're anxious for something, right? He satisfies you with good as we lean in and look to him as our source so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. And for those who, who are, are, are feeling on the, the bottom end of the totem pole, who are oppressed in many ways, who are right now still experiencing modern day slavery and the injustice of all sorts of corrupt systems. He says, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. So that's, that's today and into eternity. The Lord is working out 
righteousness and justice. And we don't see the complete culmination of either of those until we reach heaven, right? And this place is still so marred by sin, but God is working out righteousness and justice for all those who are oppressed. And then it said, oh, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Come on, that, that love, that mercy that was the crown for all of those who have looked to God, right? He's abounding in that mercy. We looked at that in Jonah as we were finishing up there. And Jonah was discovering that God was way more gracious and merciful than he even wanted. And that same story, that same uh, reality of who God is, is echoed into the other reading for today in 1 Peter chapter 4. In 1 Peter, as we talked about yesterday in the podcast, he's talking a lot about the suffering that comes along with being uh, the people of God, right? Being Jesus is, we are in the fellowship of his suffering. And he goes into that more later on in chapter four here today. But I want to look at the first half of this as he's even talking about the, the suffering, the importance of it in verse one and two. He says, since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin now he's not saying that oh if you suffer here in your body and you're, you're experiencing suffering now that you no longer sin but no he's saying in the same way that as jesus suffered on the cross and he broke the chains of sin right that as we suffer as we align ourselves with jesus through that same suffering that sin no longer has that power over us because we are choosing to deny ourselves, deny the, the gratification of our flesh. And we, we hold on to suffering so that sin is not actually allowed to, uh, um, to take us down, right? We aren't, we aren't uh, succumbing to the temptation of sin. And uh, so he says, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God, so that you are doing just like Jesus did. And he himself in his flesh wanted to not go to the cross, but for the will of God, he chose to obey and go to the cross. And then in the next few passages or next few verses, it just reminds us that we are not to live like those who satisfy the flesh. We are set apart. We are holy. We aren't to live in sensual ways like the Gentiles lived. That day is behind us. And don't worry about how they look like they're having a great time right now. In verse five, it says they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So we are reminded yet again that we are different. We are to live differently. And as we talked about yesterday, people will look at us and see hopefully the hope the, of Jesus that we have within us. And then it says, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. He's letting us know, hey, all those those uh, epic things that the Bible talked about that were going to happen, that the death or the life, the death and the resurrection and the ascension of Christ, those all have happened. And so all that we have left is a patient awaiting for Christ's return. And that is the end that is at hand. And it's still at hand. It was at hand. And then and still at hand now so we should be self-controlled and sober-minded waiting patiently for the sake of our prayers that is how we are going to be assured of the effectiveness of our prayers is our patience in uh god and it says and above all so he just said a whole lot but above all keep loving one another earnestly love covers a multitude of sins you guys as as people sin against us be them people in the church, you know, amongst our brothers and sisters, be them people in the world. He's telling us that love covers a multitude of sins. Now, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we don't try to hold one another accountable. That doesn't mean we don't call out sin for what it is. But it does mean, especially when you're looking at your brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are to be earnest in our love of one another. That, that is the signal to the rest of the world that we are truly a set apart people, a people of God, right? Love one another earnestly, he says, because love covers a multitude of sins. Keep forgiving your brothers and sisters. And then it says, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Woo! We're gonna stop there right now. 
we here, here's a here's a reality, and I think I'll I'll, I'll close with this. Um, there's so many things that the Lord calls us to, right? So many opportunities to obey, so many opportunities to love, to give, to be generous that, that God invites us into. And as we obey, the the uh, the way that we do that with full honoring of Christ in our hearts is to do it with joy, to do it without grumbling, right? Like when I talk to my daughter sometimes and I ask her to do something, she'll do it, right? She's not disobedient. But the question is going to be how she does it. Will she do it without grumbling? Or will I get like... And if you guys are parents, you know that when when you're asking your child to do something and there's a a less than... um, um, honorable response that comes out of you. You're, you're, you feel disrespected, right? That's the thing that needs to be rebuked. And this is what Peter is telling us. Hey, he just got through saying, be uh, earnest in your love to one another. Now he's saying, show hospitality, which was an important thing in Jewish and even in Greco-Roman uh, culture those days, right? Hospitality mattered. That's one of the, the things that is at even the, the heart of being an elder, right? Is that you're hospitable right? So he's talking to all of us. Show hospitality to one another. Be gracious to one another. Be inviting and welcoming to one another and do it without grumbling like someone who's being forced to do it. Know that God's empowering you with his spirit to be loving and hospitable to everyone. So I want to encourage us today, forget not all the benefits that come along with being God's. And in the midst of your pain, tell your spirit, tell your soul, right? That he is good. He heals your sicknesses. He, he forgives your sins, right? He's, he's giving you strength and he's empowering you to love and to love well in a way that is so different than the rest of the world, right? Showing hospitality, being gracious and leaning into our gifts. He continues with that, leaning into your gifts as one who would serve God, not as one who wants to be served. And I know that as we do that, that God is going to be honored. It says we would be bringing him glory and dominion, that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let me pray that we would all do that today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, gracious God, gracious and merciful God, for all the ways that you bless us beyond our even understanding of it, Lord God. We receive uh, the gift of your presence each and every day. Right now, we bask in the glow of knowing that you are with us. And we ask that you would empower us to obey, empower us to remember the benefits of being yours, empower us to, to live lives different to the rest of the world, not for the sake of difference, but for the sake of demonstrating that we are yours, demonstrating that we serve a God who is worthy of all honor, glory, and praise. And Lord God, we ask that you would help us to love and to love so that it covers a multitude of sins, so that that people are, are walking in forgiveness and recognizing that they have a place in our family. Lord God, help us to be hospitable, inviting all in. We love you. And we thank you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. I know these are getting a little bit long, but I, I'm, I'm getting into the word more and more. And I don't know. I just enjoy sharing it with you. And I hope you guys are being blessed by these. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. As I've mentioned in previous podcasts, Five by the Fire podcast itself will stop having new episodes in January. But the old episodes will stay live at fivebythefire.org. Um, make sure you go ahead and subscribe over at the Pastor Fury audio experience. I'm going to be putting more and more content there. Right now, it's very... Um, you know, hit or miss what I post over there because I'm really focusing on giving you guys daily content. But come January, that's where my focus and attention is going to be. And I hope you come along with for the journey. Thank you for being in this journey right now. If you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all back here next time on Five by the Fire. Be blessed and be a blessing. Peace.